Hey guys, what's up? So if you haven't played already Shin Megami Tensei 5 or if you've been playing this game but you're having a lot of trouble with it, well, I'm gonna give you today some pointers, some tips for beginners into this game, but also tips for beginners into the whole series. Like if this is your first Shin Megami Tensei game and you're done with it and you wanna jump back into the rest of the series, you've come to the right place, because this video is Shin Megami Tensei for beginners. And speaking about beginners, let's begin! Alright, so the game offers you three difficulty settings at the beginning, casual, normal and hard. If you've played other Shin Megami Tensei games before, start with normal, as this game is pretty damn challenging, more so than most of the others in the series, in my opinion. If you're a beginner, it's alright to start with casual, since there's barely any difference between it and normal. I played both difficulties and I noticed your characters do more damage in casual. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. But if that hurts your gamer pride, then go ahead and pick normal. The first piece of advice that I'll give you is to be very careful on how you approach demons. In this game, approaching them up front or from the sides can sometimes make them ambush you, even if they barely notice you. And getting ambushed in any Shin Megami Tensei game is pretty dangerous, so always try your best to approach them from behind if you can. And if you get ambushed and the demons ask you for money, never pay, let them kill you, because most of the demons are probably gonna keep asking for more money and they'll end up ripping you off completely. Now I don't really have an advice on how to recruit demons more easily, as it's always been very tricky in the series, but what I do strongly recommend is to recruit as many demons as possible so you can have better chances at getting better demons when you fuse them, and this is in every Shin Megami Tensei game. Money will be a problem at the beginning, especially since you'll also be using it to heal your party. Stocking up on healing items here might be a good idea, but only at the beginning. I personally preferred to use money to heal my party and have demons with healing skills during battle, or my own character with them during battle. MP, however, is a pain in the ass, as the store does not sell MP recovery items. You can only get them by finding them around, by defeating enemies or bosses, or by completing side quests. So they're very valuable and I suggest you use them only when it's absolutely necessary. This is why it's also a good idea to raise your strength status for your main character at least every once in a while, just in case. You can focus on it, but I think it's best to focus on magic and vitality. Whatever suits your fighting style better. Now let's return to this screenshot. You can see down there that the store is selling items called physical dampener or something like that. Those items are really useful, although you can only have 3 out of 3. These items are used to blocking a specific type of attack, and when you block an enemy attack during battle, well, they lose their turn, so they're pretty useful. And the same can be said about these elemental gems or shards. You can also use them to your advantage. I also suggest buying all of them. Going back to the side quests topic, I usually skip most side quests in JRPGs, not in this one. This is a game where I did more than half of them, precisely because they give you really useful items, demon essences, and you also gain a lot of experience points to level up most of the time. Another very useful thing is the miracles system. They're basically skills to make your gameplay experience more convenient and to make your character better. To get points to unlock miracles, you need glory points. There's four ways to get them. One, by finding these little guys called Miman, every single one of them will give you a small amount. Second, by finding these shiny objects, they usually give you a large amount. Three, by defeating certain bosses. And four, by defeating certain enemies called Mitama. However, these creatures are immune to every single type of attack except one. To know which one, I suggest you stock up on spyglasses. Items are sold for cheap in the store. Use one spyglass on the Mitamas and you'll know their weakness. They not only give you glory points sometimes, but also can give you tons of experience points, very useful items, or money. However, that's not all you need to do to unlock miracles, as most miracles themselves need to be found as well. But the only way to do that is by defeating the demons inside these massive red creatures lying on certain areas. 
They're optional, but I strongly suggest you do not skip on them. Try to defeat them all. You will unlock most miracle skills that way, and most of them can be very useful against boss fights. Now let's talk about the Essence Fusion, perhaps the most useful thing in the game and my best advice. What I did was that I fought a boss, noticed what type of attacks they do and their behavior. Most of the time I played normally, attempting to defeat them, but with most of them I always died once. So then I knew what strengths and weaknesses they have. I actually don't recommend using Essence Fusion until after you've died with a boss. First and foremost, your main character can not only acquire some of the skills of the demon essences you've found, but he can also use them to change his own strengths and weaknesses to those of the demon. That's, in my opinion, the most useful aspect in this game, as, for example, you can use one, if you have it, to block fire attacks against a boss that uses them quite often. Unfortunately, only him can do that, your demons can't. All they can do is acquire or change their skills for the ones of the demon essence you're trying to use. Which means it's always best to use the right demons for the right boss. So when you also do your demon fusion, always look for ones that will have strengths against that specific boss you're trying to fight. Now, some of these recommendations also work for other games in the series. One big example that's quite notable is the use of buffs and debuffs. You're gonna have to forget about your usual attack and defend tactics in turn-based JRPGs. In Shin Megami Tensei, buffs and debuffs are life saviors and are a must use for boss battles. That's in every Shin Megami Tensei game, including this one. So always give preference to demons with skills that can increase something of your party or decrease something of your enemy. At this point, you're probably wondering what's the best Shin Megami Tensei game to start with? I think the new one is great, but it might be too hard for the casual RP gamer, even on easy mode. All Shin Megami Tensei games are hard, maybe except the Demi Kids versions on the Game Boy Advance. Those are Pokemon clones, which is ironic considering Pokemon is pretty much a Megami Tensei clone, but whatever. Both light and dark versions revolve around recruiting demons too, to have them fight by your side, so they're basically Shin Megami Tensei games for kids or for beginners. Those are the easiest games in the series. If you want a normal challenge, but not as big as Shin Megami Tensei V, my pick will be either Soul Hackers or the Devil Survivor games on the 3DS. Do not start with the Devil Survivor games on the Nintendo DS. Those are just as brutal, and their strategy RPGs. Their 3DS enhanced ports rebalance the difficulty settings on normal mode, so those are the best versions to start with. Sure, they're still gonna be very challenging and you can choose the classic mode if you want to, but if you're a beginner, stick with the regular mode. Soul Hackers doesn't let you choose the difficulty, but I didn't find this game as hard as some of the others. However, it's a dungeon crawler in first person and there's random encounters, though the rate isn't that high, fortunately. Soul Hackers does not have the press turn system found in most Shin Megami Tensei games. The press turn system is where you choose one action and if you hit the enemy's weakness or get a critical, you get one extra turn, so does your enemy. In Soul Hackers, however, you choose all your actions first and good luck when they execute them. Despite that, I believe Soul Hackers is one of the most balanced SMT games out there. However, if you loved the challenge level of Shin Megami Tensei V, and you want yet another game like it, definitely try out Nocturne, the original on the PS2 or the remaster on modern systems. It's a game I find harder than 5 though, and it also has random encounters and way more annoying dungeons and puzzles, so getting into Nocturne as your first Shin Megami Tensei or after SMT5 can be very punishing, but that's up to you. I don't personally recommend Nocturne for beginners. Alright guys, those were my tips for Shin Megami Tensei 5 and also my recommendations for getting into the rest of the series. Now if you want even more advice, because sometimes I think the more the merrier, you're probably gonna find a lot of people in the comment section of this video giving other good solid advice into the series and into Shin Megami Tensei 5. And if you're interested in my books, there's a link to them in the description below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!